Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here. We're going to a three game early CSGO slate as well as the six game main slate. Uh, so nine games total to break down. Um, before getting into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos uh, breaking down NBA, NFL, XFL, and esports um, DFS slates. Uh, esports including uh, CSGO, League of Legends, as well as Call of Duty. So, um, yeah, again, we got, we're going to talk about the early slate as well as the main slate, so we can jump right into it. First, let's look at the early slate. So these are the 8 a.m. games here. Um, we got three games. Uh, the Copenhagen, Copenhagen Flames versus Godsent. Godsent are minus 235 favorites. Uh, Ninjas in Pajamas versus NS. Ninjas in Pajamas are minus 205 favorites. And the biggest favorites of the early slate, Fnatic, minus 800. Um, so... Yeah, let's talk about these teams here on the early slate. So, uh, NS versus uh, Ninjas in Paradise first. On the NS side, um, I don't know if I get to these guys at the top um, with Alu and Surge. And Surge. Still don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. Um, at 7.8 and 7.4K respectively. I think there's better or better value for the prices elsewhere. Um, you know, guys for cheaper guys like Ariel and Sonny would be maybe I would look to for contrarian value options. Uh, they are dogs, right? Not huge dogs, though. So, um, yeah, I think these guys are are in play for sure. Um, if you want to get to the two guys at the top, again, contrarian options, that's fine. Probably not the way that I go. I think my favorite place here would be the guys kind of the cheaper place with Ariel and Sonny for their respective prices. Um, I don't get. I don't think I get to seven down there. Five point four k. But yeah, Ariel, Sunny, those are two um, value guys. I'd probably look to on the NS side. Don't often get them personally, but I think they are uh, viable on this slate. Next, we move on to the Ninjas in Paradise team. So, um, the guys at the top with Rez and Knock, I think, are certainly viable if you want to go there. Um, Rez has had back to back pretty solid days here of 76 and 82 fancy points. Knock had said pretty good games last two games at 71 and 76. I think those guys are certainly in play. My favorite play here, I think, is Plopsky at 7K. You're getting him at a discount off those guys at the top. Um, and he said he's been pretty consistent. Um, so I think he's a pretty safe play here at 7K. He's actually had the most, if we're just looking at fantasy points per game for the games that are that they have on DraftKings, he has the most by far here at 55.1 compared to 46.1 and 46.4 for the two guys above him. So Plopsky is probably my favorite play here on the Ninjas in Paradise side. I like him a good amount. Um, I think uh, Lurko is viable as well at 6.6K. Uh, but yeah, Plopsy, definitely my favorite there at 7K. If you want to get to Rez and Knock, who's had, who've had good uh, games last two games, those guys are certainly viable. But Plopsy being my favorite um, on the Ninjas in Paradise side. Or Pajamas, wait. Do I, ninjas in Pajamas. I feel like I, I keep saying Ninjas in Paradise. I don't know why. Ninjas in Pajamas. God, I got to get that through my head. So, all right. Next game here is um, uh, Fnatic versus Dignitas. And Fnatic are the biggest favorites of the day here. And this is probably where your safety is. You're going to get a lot of ownership here on the Fnatic side, but for good reason, right? They're huge favorites. Um, I think an upset is slim to none, to be honest. Now, we have seen some upsets here recently. Um, we saw um, Cloud9 going down to... Um, who they, I forget who they played, but they were like pretty big favorites. They went down. Um, we saw Mouse Esports on Sunday... They sunk my lineup as well as a lot of other people. They were the ultimate shock. They were huge favorites uh, against North, and they lost 2-0. So, yeah, sure, anything can happen. Um, but I will probably be avoiding the Dignitas side and uh, probably going to try to get a lot of exposure to Team Fnatic. I think that's what a lot of other people do as well. Um, but, yeah, I think they're pretty safe for how you know big of favorites they are. Now, if we're just talking about prices, you know the two guys here at the bottom I think are certainly play, Golden and JW. Now, not guys that have huge upside, but in games they have won, right? So this NS game, uh, they lost, you know, they have 14 points, right? But in, in games they've won, right, he can put up 40, 50, 63 fancy points. So not a guy that's going to go out and break the slate, in my opinion, but Golden, guy that can, you know, they should be able to win this pretty easily, 2-0. 
Um, if that's the case, you know that he's going to get 20 points bonus for rounds not played and the match sweep. Again, 5 for the sweep, 15 for the rounds not played if they do sweep them. So that's 20 points right there. Vitez is a decent outing, right? You can put up 50, 60. So Golden, again, same argument there for JW. I think these guys are safe value plays. Um, and probably were, again, if you're looking just for safety, those guys probably stand out as really solid uh, values. If we're looking at three guys at the top, price pretty similar, uh, Crims, Brolin, and Flusha. I think all three are, you can make an argument for all three. I really don't think one stands out more than the other. Um, Brolin, I guess, would be my favorite if you're going to make me pick. But I think getting three players from Fnatic uh, in your lineup for this early slate is probably going to be the chalk, but probably the uh, optimal way to go unless something crazy happens, right? So that's probably where I'm going to stack. I'll probably get, you know, um, either one or two of these guys at the top and, and one or two of these value plays and go from there. Again, Team Dignitas is a team I'll be fully evading. If you want to get really risky and hope for an upset, sure, you can target these guys. Again, personally, that's not going to be the way that I go. Last game here, uh, the Copenhagen Flames versus Godsent. Uh, Godsent minus 235 favorites. So, um, you know, their fantasy points are down. If you're just looking at fantasy points per game, they've had some, some good competition. I think my favorite play here would be McAlealy at only 6.2K. Um, again, you know, he's had not a lot of fantasy points per game because they had played against tough teams, right? Uh, Vitality, Astralis. Uh, but in games they've won, right, against Spy and uh, E, 51 and 51 fantasy points. He's at 6.2K. Madden's all the way up here at 9K. And again, in those two wins, he's put up 50 and 57, so very, very similar to McAlealy, and McAlealy's get a 3K discount. Uh, Steiko, if you just look at their two wins, right, he's put up 41 and 74 fancy points. Um, so I think he's a, a decent, I would probably prefer him as a spend up to Madden, just personally, because we've seen that, you know, bigger upside from him. And then Zen, uh, in their two games, they won 48 and 59. So, uh, Crystal's probably a guy I avoid. I don't think I get to him at 5K, but McAlealy, Zen. I think those are probably my two favorite plays here on the Godsent side. Um, again, I would probably prefer Styco to Madden if you're going to spend up there. On the Copenhagen Flame side, uh, Farlig is the guy that has um, some pretty big upside. And if you expect an upset, I think you can definitely look to him. He's a contrarian spend up, but does have a lot of upside. We saw it in that last game there against CG. 92 fancy points, 74 kills, 45 deaths. Um, even in tough matchups, right, against Mad, against Havu, C9, he's putting up decent numbers, 36, 62, 52. So um, if Copenhagen Flames can pull off this upset, um, you're probably going to see a big game from Farley here. So he's someone I certainly have my eye on um, for a spend-up. I think he's more contrarian, but definitely in play. The other value guys, right, um, nothing really stands out as amazing, but if you're going to go with the Copenhagen Flames side and hope they pull off the upside, you can, you know, pair Farleg with one of those value guys. I don't think that's the worst idea. Um, but yeah, I think that basically does it for the early slate. Again, I think Fnatic is your your safe route, right? Probably get three guys from there. And then, um, you know, in the other games, like I said, I, I like uh, Plopsky. I think is my favorite player there in the Ninjas in pajama side. Um, I think, you know, value on the NSI, like Ariel or Sunny. On the Godsent side, right, uh, McAlealy, Zen. I think McAlealy, especially for that price, stands out as a pretty decent option. On the Copenhagen Flame side, um, Farleg is a guy that has huge upside. You're going to have to pay premium for him, but does. Again, if they can pull up the upside, he'll probably have a pretty big day. You know, if you want to pair him with one of those daily guys, that is viable. So, I think that basically does it for the uh, early slate breakdown. Um, that was three games. We still have a lot of Counter-Strike to talk about because we have six more games for the main slate. All right, let's do it. We have a big tournament here too. $15, 25K to first. Make sure you guys get in that one. Uh, super, super excited. They're raising the um, the prize pools here for CSGO. Um, CSGO has been pretty popular here recently. So yeah, I'm very, very excited for this main slate. And let's talk about it. So first, let's take a look at the Vegas odds here for these six for the six games in the main slate. We have Astralis first team, Vitality. Astralis minus 360 favorites. Astralis one of the best teams, if not the best team right now in the world. Team Vitality is um, a pretty solid team, but they are, again, pretty decent dogs there. Uh, Movistar Riders versus FaZe Clan. FaZe Clan are the biggest favorites on the main site here at minus 700. Uh, the Movistar Riders are probably a team I'm going to avoid. Team Heretics versus Complexity. This one should stay decently close. Complexity are favorites, uh, only minus 215, though. 100 Thieves versus Triumph. Another uh, game where is 100 Thieves are pretty... 
Um, pretty heavily favored here at minus 500. Evil Geniuses and Cloud9. Uh, Evil Geniuses, minus 345 favorites. So pretty decent favorites there over Cloud9. Uh, Gen G versus Orglis. Gen G at minus 275 favorites. And that is the uh, Vegas odds there for the six games in the main slate. So what we can do is we can go team by team. And we can start with uh, the first game here, Complexity versus Team Heretics. So on the Complexity side, um, again, they are minus 215 favorites. So, um, you know, they are um, they are viable for sure on, this, on the slate. Config here at the top at 9.8K. I just, I don't think I, I want to pay... Um, all the way up for him at this price. I just think that's too pricey, in my opinion. I would much prefer getting a guy like Nico or, or the guys at the top compared to Config. Now, sure, that's going to probably... He's probably going to be pretty low-owned. If you want to take a dart throw and hopefully he goes off, maybe Heretex takes it to, to three games, right? You can. Uh, not really that I go, and I prefer other spin-ups on the slate. Let's see. Uh, as far as value plays go, um, you know, Blameuff at, at 8.2K, I think it's fine. Um, I'd probably prefer him to config, but not overly excited about those guys. Oboe and Poison here at, at both 6.8K. I think these guys are intriguing value plays, but I probably prefer other others on the slate. Rush, I don't think i get to him. So all in all, I know Complexity are favorites here, but their price tags are, are a little bit higher than I would like. So no one really stands out with an amazing play here. If you want to get like one-off exposure here, um, you know, Blame, blame F or or one of those two guys at 6.8K I think are doable, but I don't know if I'm going to get there personally. On the Heretic side, so their fantasy points for games, you're just looking at that. Um, they've had really good days, but they've had uh, they've played some pretty easy uh, teams. 99, 93, 99 fantasy points. So don't go crazy here. This is a much tougher matchup here against uh, Team Complexity. So I don't think I get to these guys at the top, May Meka and Navara at 8.8 .8 and 8, 8K respectively. Um, I think my favorite play here on the Heretic side would be Lucky at 6.6K. Um, but still, again, I think there's probably uh, better value plays on, on this uh, slate. So all in all, this first game is a game that I'm not overly excited about, right? The price tags in both teams are a little bit higher than I would like. So that kind of does it for the breakdown there. Next, let's talk about Team Vitality versus Astralis. So Astralis, again, one of the best teams, if not the best team right now in Counter-Strike. Um, they are minus 360 favorites. Team Vitality is a pretty solid team, but they are pretty significant dogs. Uh, Zaiwu, I think, makes for an interesting contrarian play here at 9.4K. He flashed, uh, he does have upside right against the Ninjas in Pajamas team a couple uh, days ago. He put up 94 fancy points. So, um, yeah, I think he is he is in play. Again, a contrarian option, probably not the, not the way that I go. Um, other options here, you know, the three guys here in the mid-tier, RPX, Apex, Shocks, I think are okay. But going up against Astralis, I don't feel great about it. Again, if you want to take the side of uh, Vitality and hope for the upset, you can. But I just feel much, much better for the Astralis side here. So on the Astralis side, I like a lot here. This is one of my favorite teams to target. I know they're not the biggest favorites of the day. But if Team Vitality can take this to three games, that's huge. So... Uh, device at 8.4k, I really like. He is, uh, you know, their main slayer in my opinion, just from watching a lot of Astralis games. Um, he is their ADP peer. He's a guy that does have upside. Put up uh, 94 there against Mouse Esports. Um, so I do like to, uh, device a good amount at 8.4k, and you're getting him at a pretty big discount off those guys at the top, right? We have guys in the 9k range, even in the 10k range with Nico. So I like device a good amount. Uh, the next three guys here with Magic, Zypex, and Dupree. Normally, I, I pick the lowest uh, price guy there. So uh, Dupree and Zypex, I do like a good amount. If you want to get to Magic, that's fine. But I would prefer Zypex and Dupree. I like both these guys a lot here for you know guys in the mid-tier. Um, so yeah, Zypex, Dupree, I like as well as Device. All three of those guys have a good amount of interest in. Magic is fine too. Uh, Glob is a guy I probably don't get to at that price. You know, if he was about $1,000 cheaper, I would look to him as value. But I just much prefer getting a little, paying a little bit more for Dupree or a little bit more for Zypex. So, yeah, all in all, Astralis is a team I'm pretty uh, heavy on for this slate. I like him a good amount. And you're getting the discounts off those guys at the top. So, again, Device, Zypex, Dupree. I like all three of those guys a good amount here. Next game here, we got FaZe versus Movistar Riders. So, Movistar Riders will be a team I'm fully fading. If you want to take a train shots and GPPs, fine. Knocking the way that I go. 
Faze is a team that you got to have interest in because they're such big favorites, right? So Nico at the top at 10.2K. I'm a little bit torn here because obviously the matchup is great, but m you know more than likely this is going to be a 2-0. And with that being the case in that third game, he's only going to get 20 points. Now 20 points out of Nico for a game is not really what you want, right? He's the guy that can get you 30, even 40 fancy points in one game, a counter-strike. And so you're going to have to have a pretty, pretty good day from, from uh, Nico to really pay off that salary, right? If he can put up like 70 to 80 fancy points in the first two games, uh, and then obviously we'll get that 20-point bonus. That's assuming they 2-0 they can have a pretty, bit, uh, pretty big day. He is a guy that has obviously a really high floor, but is the highest-priced guy in the slate. I think in this matchup, um, in such an easy matchup, he's probably got a floor of about 60 to 70 fancy points with upside for more. Obviously, if Movistar Riders can somehow take this to three games, you could see him putting up over 100 fancy points. So Nico's the guy that I am a little bit torn on right now, um, but obviously I have interest in and I think does have a lot of upside. Um, the next couple guys here, uh, you're getting him at a sev uh, severe discount off Nico. Brokey, Rain, Cold Zero. I prefer Brokey. I think he has the most upside out of those three. And they're priced pretty similarly. Um, he is their AD peer. He's had back-to-back -back really solid days, 76 and 85 fancy points. Before that, he was a little bit up and down. But again, such an easy matchup here. Um, you you got to have interest in this phase team. So I do like Brokey a good amount there. Um, compared, you know, Rain and Coldzera are fine as well, but I think Brokey is my favorite play of those three guys. And then finally, the cheapest guy on the slate, or cheapest guy on the team is Olafmeister. And normally he's a guy I avoid, but at a price of 5K, that is a really, really cheap price tag for such an easy matchup in a game. Again, you've got to assume FaZe is going to 2-0 here. So that's probably more than likely he's going to get at least 20 points just for that round, uh, those 30 rounds not played in a sweep. And if he just has a decent game, you can see him putting up, you know, 50, even 60 fancy points. So at this price tag, again, normally a guy I avoid, I have interest in Olafmeister. I think he's a really solid value play here. Um, so yeah, all in all, phases of the team, I do like a good amount. Nico, Brokey, Olafmeister, I think those three are my favorite plays. But really, you can make an argument for any of those guys in the phase roster. If you're going more balanced and want, you know, to get Rain or Cold Zero in there, I'm fine with that. Um, again, Movistar Riders will be team I will be fully av avoiding. If you want to take shots in GPPs and these guys, go for it. Knock me away that I go. Next game here, we have EG versus Cloud9. EG was a team that uh, surprisingly got uh, upset there against 100 Thieves. Uh, they are uh, big favorites here in this one. Uh, not huge favorites, but pretty significant favorites at minus 345 compared to Cloud9 at plus 260. Um, again, EG was a team that let me down the other day against 100 Thieves. Breeze or Breezy and um, Cirque just had subpar games, and they got 2 0'd. Um, but this is an easier matchup um, against Cloud9. So Breeze, Breezy, and Cirque are, are viable, but again, I, I think there's. I think I prefer other spin ups uh, compared to Breezy there. Now, I'm not saying he's out of play, I still have interest. Um, same with Cirque. Um, as far as the value guys here with Ethan, Stanislaw, and Tariq, nothing really stands out as an, like, an amazing play. If you land on one of those guys for you know a value play, I'm fine with it. Um, you know, this is a game that could go to three, three, uh, three games, which is good. Um, again, Breezy, Cirque at the top there, I think, are viable. Not my favorite plays, but I think they are in play. On the on the Cloud9 side, so I know they're dogs here. And last time I targeted dogs, underdogs, um, didn't go so well for me when I targeted MIBR. Um, Fallen and Fur uh, played decent, but again, they got 2 0 against Team Liquid. This might be another situation uh, where I, I, I'm thinking about targeting some Cloud9 players. Uh, and the, kind of the same thing here, this Genji Orgla side. On the Orgla side, they have had some upside here. So. Yeah, again, normally I avoid the underdogs, but Cloud9 and Orglis, we'll talk about Orglis here in a bit, are, are teams that I'm very much considering. Now, Floppy is a guy that, if you watch my NBA videos, he's kind of like the DeMontis Sabonis to me. He rarely ever lets me down, very, very consistent, and you're getting him at a severe, severe discount. I know they are underdogs here against EG, but um, Floppy is their, their go-to slayer. He is their playmaker. Um, and if Cloud9 can take this to three games, you're probably going to see a pretty big game from Floppy. Now, again, even against tougher matchups, you put up, you know, he can put up 50, 60 fancy points. He's only 7.4K. We've seen big upside games from him, right? 84, 90 fancy points and wins. So um, Floppy is a guy that, 
maybe goes avoided on the slate, but he's someone I'm very, very much considering. Uh, I do like the price tag. I know it's a risk targeting underdog players, but um, I, I just I like the price tag and him a good amount. OC is always priced um, about the same as Floppy. I'm always going to prefer Floppy to OC, but um, you know you can go OC two if you want. If you want to pair those two together, I don't think that's the worst idea for more of a contrarian build. Uh, build. Uh, again, Sonic versus MOTM. They seem to always be priced about the same as well. I'm going to prefer uh, MOTM to Sonic. Uh, JT's the guy I will not be going to even at that price point. So all in all, uh, C9, I know they're underdogs. I think their ownership is going to be um, not very high in this one. But Floppy, MOTM are the two guys I like the most here on the C9 side. And I'm debating. I might take shots here on these um, on the Cloud9 players. Again, I know they're underdogs. I know they've been struggling recently. But I like the price tags in both those guys. Uh, next game here is Orglis versus Gen G, and this is kind of the same thing. Orglis is a team that, you know, they've been underdogs, but they've been putting up some pretty big numbers. And Infinite was the guy that I brought up as taking a shot on as a uh, contrarian option there against Cloud9. Um, it was uh, Orglis that actually beat Cloud9. He put up 98 fancy points. Um, so, yeah, obviously, Infinite's a guy that has upside, and he is only 6.6K. So, I do like Infinite a good amount. Uh, him and Wardell are the two main slayers. Wardell is a little bit more pricey. I think, you know, Infinite's going to be a little bit more popular if we're just talking about ownership because of the price tag. Both those guys are playable. Again, I think Infinite is probably the preferred play for me. I know the ownership will probably be a little bit higher. Uh, but if we're talking about just general ownership, I don't think these guys can be that high owned because they are underdogs. Uh, but yeah, Infinite would be my favorite play there on the Orglus side. Um, even a guy like Sub Rosa, 5.6K. I kind of like that price tag as well. So just like the Cloud9 team, I know these guys are underdogs, but Infinite and Sub Rosa are probably my favorite place here if you want to get more contrarian. Um, on the Gen G side, this is a team that is pretty balanced, but uh, again, their favorites here, they are uh, minus 275 favorites, but Orglis is a pretty decent team, so don't completely write off Orglis. Um, Costa at the top here at 8.6, I think is makes for an interesting play, but I think I probably would prefer the guys under him. Uh, Bennett and Automatic for about $1,000 less. Um, Bennett has had back-to-back -back pretty good games here at 85 and 90 fancy points. 85 against a good team against 100 Thieves. So these are two guys that under 8K, if you're going more of a balance approach, I have some interest here. Uh, SOM was a guy I used for value the other day at 6.6K. He was pretty solid, put up 80 fancy points. I think he's another guy you can consider. Daps is a guy, even at that price, I'll be avoiding so that basically wraps it up for Gen G. Last game here, we have Triumph versus 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves are pretty big favorites. I don't think I want to target Triumph here again. The two underdogs that I'm considering targeting here are the Cloud9 guys and the Orgus guys. The Triumph guys, again, I'm probably fully avoiding. If you want to take a shot on one, it would be Grim. Uh, he's the guy that has the most upside. He's the guy that, if Triumph is going to take this for three games, are probably going to see a big game from Triumph in one of those, uh, or from Grim in one of those. So. Um, yeah, Grim is a guy that if you want to get super contrarian, you can target, but probably not going to be the way that I go. On the 100 Thieves side, this is another team that is pretty balanced. If you're just looking at the fantasy points per game, um, again, they're a pretty balanced team. Gratis Faction at 9.2K had a huge game there against EG, but other than that, he's had you know just subpar games. Now, this is a much easier matchup. And again, I think these 100 Thieves guys are pretty safe. You are paying a premium, but I think he is in play. Same thing with JKS. Both these guys are about priced the same. JKS has been pretty consistent. Again, you got to consider uh, the matchup here is a lot easier than some of these uh, previous games. So these two 100 Thieves guys at the top are certainly viable. Again, I think they're pretty safe for how, how heavily they are favored. If we're talking about value, kind of the same thing. I, I really don't think you have a whole lot of negative things to say about these 100 Thieves team because they're such big favorites. AZR, Jakeem, Laez, I think are all three in play for value or kind of in the mid-tier to value options. It's just, you know, what fits in your lineup. So I think 100 Thieves is a team that's pretty safe to target. Again, kind of the same with FaZe. They're pretty big favorites if you're just looking for safety. Um, and then, those again, those Astralis guys in the kind of the mid-tier I like a lot as well. So all in all, let's do a, a quick recap here. If we're just looking at the salaries here, um, you know, these guys at the top, let's say the top five here of Nico, Config, Breezy, Zywoo, and Gratis Faction. I think Nico, um, if you can get to him, is obviously a pretty safe option. Has huge upside. If, if uh, Movistar Riders can take the three games, you could see Nico putting up uh, 100 points plus. 
Config, for that price, I'll pass. Breezy, I think it is in play. Not my favorite spend up, but I think it is viable. Zywoo, more of a contrarian option, but if Vitality is going to have a chance against the Straws, we're probably going to see a big game from Zywoo. Gratis Faction and Jay Cask and those 100 Thieves guys, they're huge favorites. A really, really easy matchup here. So I think those guys at a discount off of, you know, Nico at the top, I think make for pretty safe options if you want to go that direction. Uh, the Heretic side, they're, you know, they're priced up because of their easy matchups. I don't know if I get to them against Complexity. That team or that game in general, I'm not overly excited about. Uh, Costa here in Gen G, I think I prefer the the guys a little bit cheaper on the same team. Device talked about him. I like a good. I like him a good amount. Uh, Blame F, I think is fine, but not my favorite play. Magix is, is doable as well. Now Straw side, really not a whole lot of negative things to say. I just prefer Device for a little bit more. Zypex and Dupree for a little bit less. Um, again, the Heretic side, not super excited about. Cirque is fine. Is it at 8K? You're getting about a $1,500 discount off of Breezy. Um, maybe if you want a game stack, then I hope it goes to three games. Um, you could pair like Cirque with maybe a Cloud9 guy. Don't think that's the worst idea. Uh, Brokey at a severe discount, or about a 2K discount off of Nico. He's the, my favorite play of those guys in the mid tier for phase. I like him a good amount. They're ADP. -er. I think he does have upside in a really, really good matchup. These two Gen G guys, again, Bennett and Automatic, I think make for pretty solid plays. But I wouldn't uh, completely cross off those Orgus guys. We'll talk about those guys again as contrarian options. And Zypex, I told I told you guys I like him a lot. I like Dupree a lot. I, mean, I think Astralis, uh, is, again, is one of the best teams in the game. Um, Wardell, again, him and Infinite for contrarian options. I know they're underdogs, but these two guys do have upside. I would probably prefer Infinite for his price. Uh, the other phase guys, um, with Rain, Cold Zera, kind of the mid-tier, I would just prefer Brokey. But if you land on Rain or Cold Zera, I don't think that's the worst idea and a really, really good matchup. Floppy's a guy, again, kind of like the DeMontis bonus for NBA. He seems to rarely let me down. I know it's a tougher matchup. They are underdogs, pretty decent underdogs. But this might be where I get risky and maybe take a shot on him. And you're getting him at a severe discount here at 7.4K. He's Cloud9's best player. I've watched a lot of Cloud9 games. So I do have a good amount of interest here in Floppy as a contrarian option. Grim, another super, super contrarian option. I would prefer getting to Floppy if you're trying to take shots on lower own guys. Again, Dupree, I already talked about liking him and Zypex and Device a lot. Um, OC, I think is fine, but I would prefer Floppy. Uh, Glave, I would just prefer getting those other Astralis guys. They're priced pretty similarly. Um, Lucky would be my favorite play on the Heretic side, but I'm not super, super excited there. Infinite, talked about liking him. Wardell is contrarian options, but I think Orgus does have a chance to pull off an upset. Let's see, other options here. Uh, Sonic versus MOTM. Again, I prefer MOTM if you want another Cloud9 exposure at 6 k That's a pretty cheap price tag. I know they are dogs, but him, Floppy as contrarian options, are, I think, are viable. Sub so Rosa, another guy on the Orgus side. Um, at only 5.6k, him and Infinite, I think, are my favorite plays on the Orgless side for their prices. Again, those guys should be a little bit more contrarian, though. Olaf Meister, normally a guy I avoid, but at 5k in such a good matchup, um, I think he's someone that I'm definitely looking at for value. Um, Dap, don't think I get to him. I would prefer Olaf Meister if we're going really, really cheap. And that basically does, again, I don't think I get to JT or Junior either. Um, yeah, again, and if we're talking for Captain, I'm probably... You know, looking at one of these guys at the top, um, you know, with like Nico or one of those 100 of Thieves guys um, or the you know, Astralis guys, kind of the mid-tier, right? Um, and then if you want to get risky, guys like Floppy, guys like Infinite. Those are going to train um, captain spots, but um, some guys I'm definitely considering. And then, again, I always kind of talk about this. If you want to go this direction, you can fit um, a lot of good players in your lineup. So say you throw in Olaf Meister. I think he's my favorite really, really cheap play here um, on the slate. If you throw him in the captain spot, 8.5K remaining. You could probably get uh, Nico, one of these 100 Thieves guys, and then kind of go, you know, maybe with those Astralis guys. I think that is certainly a build that is uh, doable on this uh, main slate. Again, super, super excited for this. Um, we have a huge tournament here, 25K to first for DraftKings for this slate. So, um, yeah, I think that about does it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown of the early slate as well as the six-game main slate here for CSGO. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. That will also be in the description below. I'll make sure to get back to you guys before the uh, lock here. Um, but, yeah, thanks again for everyone coming to check out the video. I really do appreciate it. hope you guys are all staying safe, healthy, um, and I'll be back for another video to break down the Wednesday slate. So I will see you guys all then.